Good afternoon. This is Weekend at One. Thank you very much for joining us. We continue to receive a lot of reactions on President Uru Kenyatta's ICC case withdrawal. And we start off in Muranga where all businesses came to a halt in the area as Agikuyu elders are drawn from across the country and residents broke into song and dance following the news of the withdrawal of President Uru Kenyatta's ICC case. It started out as an event organized by Moranga County to sign a pact with Kenyatta University on restoring communities' culture. But as soon as the news was received, the focus changed. The elders led by residents in prayer, uh, in, in, who, read the, who led the residents in prayers as they faced Mount Kenya and later joined in celebrations. Speaking during the event, the governor of Muranga County, Mwangi Wairia, said the decision was by the court was long overdue as the president was innocent from the beginning. The same sentiments were echoed by the Gikuyu Council of Elders, Chairman Washira Kiago. <laughs> kwa sababu ile kitu tunashakuwa tukimuomba tumeshaenda mkoa wa Nyakadanga mara mingi kumuuliza aje aokoe hii nchi yetu na kuiokoa kwanza ni kuokoa viongozi wetu as a community we are going to continue with prayers because we are we are again putting our deputy president and also sang at the same program we are going to pray for him we are going to pray for them so that we can all let alone come here and celebrate the, the victory the victory of our, of our leaders and uh, to celebrate uh, the god the good god that we we worship in meru too Area leaders led by Igembe North Member of Parliament Joseph Iroaki and the Mayor Woman Representative Florence Kajuju joined others across the country who were sending congratulatory messages to President Uru Kenyatta. Elsewhere, the Gatundu South Member of Parliament, Moses Kuria, says Uhuru Kenyatta and Deputy President William Ruto's critics should now eat a humble pie after Uhuru was let go by the ICC prosecutor. And the naysayers have been on this for a long time. They have been predicting all sorts of things. You remember these two gentlemen were not even supposed to vie in the first place. Remember they were supposed to be jailed by now. So, and, but you know, all those schemes have been defeated. So by the same token, the schemes of those people who think that this is the head of Jubilee government will be defeated. And I think this, this coalition will come out stronger. Because as I'm saying today, today is an indictment of the poor process of investigation, not only for the president's case, but also for the deputy president's case. So I think the, the chances of uh, uh, deputy president's case clambering have gone up by 100% today. And I think that it's just a question of time before even the deputy president's uh, case is over. And they work together as Jubilee Coalition. And in Kisi County, political leaders called on President Uhuru Kenyatta to shift his focus to the issues bedeviling Kenya, such as insecurity and radicalization, now that the ICC case is over. Now, Uhuru Kenyatta, sasa mepata na vasi nzuri ya kutumia wananchi wa Kenya kasi. Na kwa hivyo, nataka kumuambia, sasa atoe ni najua alikuwa na mafikirio ya kesi ya kufanyia wananchi kazi lakini wakati hii hayo mambo mfanya nini ameisha na mimi wakati huu nataka kusema tutaunga serikali yake wakati huu tutaunga serikali yake kwa maana yeye ndio rais wa Kenya kama nitamuitisha kuja hapa hiyo sikumaanisha mimi nimeenda tena hiyo sikumaanisha mimi nimeenda 
jubilee lakini kitu ya muhimu kama ni kufanya na kazi na jubilee tutafanya sio kama nanielewa tutafanya na kazi na jubilee kama wananchi wa Kenya na tukienda hata mbele mheshimiwa bora hapa tutaongea na yeye hata tukiwa na chama chetu hakuna kosa mnanielewa hakuna kosa lakini kitu ya muhimu tupate maendeleo kama wa Kenya sisi hapa kisii tunataka kumpongeza rais kwa kuweza kushinda kesi hiki rais tunampongeza kwa jambo moja muhimu kwa sababu yeye anaamini juu ya sheria na alipota alipotakikana kule heg yeye mwenyewe alienda mpaka heg akaenda through that process na mwishowe sasa amefaulu na kesi imetupiliwa mbali And so it has come full circle for President Uhuru, ending in jubilation for him and his supporters, even as some of his allies remain in the mix. KTN's associate editor Noah Teno now takes us through what began as a balanced cast of suspects for PNU and ODM in December 2010, only to, to see some fall through the net. On the 15th of December 2010, Louis Moreno Campo suddenly became one of the biggest and possibly the most scary names in the attempts to secure justice for victims of Kenya's post-election violence following the 2007 election. On that day, Ocampo made public the names of prominent Kenyans he wanted tried over the violence, the deaths of at least 1,300 people, and the displacement of at least 600,000 others. This was facilitated by Mr. Kenyatta, who was a focal point between the Mungiki, who is a group in Kenya, and the Party of National Unity. The suspects would henceforth be referred to simply as the Ocampo Six. Uhuru Kenyatta, who was already obviously being groomed for big things by the Kibaki administration, as was seen in the high-profile appointments in government, was shocked and angry. I know that this is a delicate moment in our country and I know that tensions are bound to ari arise and I know that accusations and counter accusations will be traded but really this is a time for us to exercise restraint, restraint keep the peace and indeed let the process take its course. Then confirmation of charges hearing began on the 21st of September 2011. As a result of the decisions issued today, Mr. Ruto, Mr. Sang, Mr. Mutaura and Mr. Kenyatta are committed to trial. The ICC would later refuse to confirm charges against Uhuru's co-accused Major General Hussein Ali in January 2012 and later set free Francis Mutaura in March 2013. Uhuru Kenyatta put together a powerful defense team at The Hague and beyond the court, the Kibaki administration and later the Uhuru government mounted a massive campaign that went all the way to the United Nations Security Council and continentally secured an African Union resolution to stand behind Kenyatta and challenge the ICC. Thank you. The case against Uhuru was to commence on 24th January this year, but Prosecutor Fatou Bensouda started faltering. Her witnesses against Uhuru were requesting After to remove that, their testimonies and pulling out of the case. The government, too, was accused of refusing to cooperate with Ben Suda in her request to be given crucial records pertaining to Uhuru's finances. The government denied the claims. Uhuru's defense team at the ICC became more ferocious in their demands for the case to be dropped for lack of evidence. The judges gave the prosecutor several chances adjoining the case again in February 2014 and then in October 2014. Two status conferences on the 7th and 8th October this year painted the picture of a frustrated prosecutor. It also got to Huru and his allies very confident about the direction the case was headed. Uhuru came back home to a rapturous reception. On Wednesday this week, the judges handed Bensuda an ultimatum, try Uhuru or set him free. And now, with Bensuda's admission that she has no solid evidence to carry the case, Uhuru, the man whose name means freedom, 
is free. Now, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto have become a pretty powerful political pair since they joined up ahead of the 2013 general election. Interestingly, it is that very changing nature of Kenya's political alliances that may present the biggest political problem now for Uhuru and Ruto. Ruto's supporters have always maintained that it is Ruto's former political enemies who are then in PNU who helped to strengthen and even, quote-unquote, fix him at the ICC. And now, with Uhuru going free and Ruto remaining on trial at the ICC, analysts think this could be the trigger for the beginning of a rift between Ruto and Uhuru inside the Jubilee Coalition. Now, you know, Katian, Nairobi. Thank you, Noah, for that. And now from matters ICC, we move to some rather devastating news where residents and business owners in Madhara North Area 4 are counting losses after a fire consumed property. According to the residents, the fire may have started as a result of an electric fault given the numerous illegal power connections in the area. The drive-in club is one of the enterprises that were brought down in the blaze. The owner has said the loss could be in the millions. It took hours for the National Youth Service to contain the fire as accessing the area was a challenge. Tukekuwa tumesima hii moto, chue lianza kidogo tukiwa hapa. Chazo cha moto, wanasema ni stima, vile wale walikuwa kwa hile kanyumba, ilianza stima. Illegal connections, Kenya Power pia wasingatia hiyo sana. Manake inaeza leta maafa na madhara. I would like to hear what is happening around you. Our Twitter handle is at KTN Kenya, same as Facebook. My name is Ian Wafula. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. Joy Doreen Bira comes next with Africa Speaks. Welcome home.